30 seconds to places. Hey there, Donnie is my monocle. How many players are you? It's sort of a wacky dust boat kind of thing. And you would be the crust. I'm almost curtain I asked you how many players there are, no? You know that's gonna hurt like hell when you pull it off. Stumped by this question, huh? I smell a tranny wreck. Let's just go with one player. Just you, that's not surprising. Go ahead and enter your name. Oh, come on now, player one. All you have to do is type in your name. You know, you'll get a lot further in life if you can remember your name. How about Hercules? This was my nickname, too, at chess camp. Okay, now here's what's going to happen, Stance. You'll get a question, and when you gleam the right answer, choose the boutonniere next to it. There will be a timer counting down, so the more harried your actions, the more money you'll get. Ah! Or surrender. Okay, folks, we're getting close. Ten seconds. Off you glow. Can I get a Wimbledon check? Six, five, to go to black? four, go ahead and touch three. Someone with other people's fingers. Welcome to the game. My name's Cookie Masterson, and uh, I'm afraid of zippers. Playing alone, I see. What else is new? And our wrong answer of the game is sponsored by... Fashion Barrel Barrelware. Comfort, freedom, style, and the faint smell of pickles. Wear your wood well. Find the wrong answer associated with our sponsor to get yourself some sweet prizes and bonus cash. <laughs> so, let's make this happen. <laughs> to begin with... I can't feel my potatoes. Oh, mm, I love Pringles. Mm, mm. You know what their slogan says? Once you pop, you can't stop. It's so true. Mm, mm. If once you popped, you couldn't stop, and you decided to enter a 12-step program at Pringleholics Anonymous, what would be the first step? Weaning yourself away from Pringles, helping others with their Pringle problems, asking forgiveness for your Pringle problem, or admitting you have a Pringle problem. Time's a-wasting! You could have at least tried. Hell, you might have even come up with this. The first step of the 12-step program as created by AA is admitting you have a problem and are powerless to your addiction. For the record, I certainly don't have a Pringle problem. I only eat them at parties and nightclub bathrooms and in bed while watching old episodes of Love Connection. Here's a good one. Make this your main profile question? Who would most likely use the famous surgeon's photograph as their main profile pic on Facebook? Albert Einstein, Dr. Robert Jarvik, Marilyn Monroe, or Nessie the Loch Ness Monster? How much time left? Now, why wouldn't you even take a guess? It's not like anyone's gonna find out. Let me show you the right answer. The famous photograph of Nessie poking her head out of the water is known as the surgeon's photograph because it was supposedly taken by a doctor. And since then, the photo has indeed proven to be doctored. By the way, Nessie enjoys water skiing, long walks on the beach at night, and playing Mafia Wars. Oh, and she's a diehard Christian. This one's called, Who Be You? Which arrangement of B words fills in the following blanks? Blank movie, blank Arthur, blank cool, sloop John blank. B B B B B B B B B B B B or B B B. Hey, it's your game. You want to watch it slip away? Fine by me. While you're waiting. 
B-Movie, B. Arthur, B. Cool, the 2005 movie starring John Travolta, and Sloop John B., the Beach Boys song. Hey, Beach Boys, BB. <laughs> One thing I'm very proud of is that I got straight Bs in college, because hepatitis C is the bad one, right? Everybody quite drunk. Everybody quite drunk. Hey. It's time for Vegetable. Which VeggieTales character would be classified as having an ectomorph body type? Bob the Tomato, Archibald the Asparagus, Larry the Cucumber, or Jerry Gord? This is pathetic. Do I need to start answering the questions too? Ectomorphs have thin, narrow chests and abdomens. Which is too skinny if you ask me. Personally, I prefer something with a little meat on its bones. Or any meat. Or bones. Like chicken wings. Mmm. I'm hungry. Where's the vibe, girl? Rock my world, girl. Ooh, yeah. Coming up. Yo-ho, ow! And it's a dis or dat. I'm going to read off seven things, and for each one, tell me if it's a type of ab exercise, part of a pirate ship, or both. If it's an ab exercise, press one. If it's part of a pirate ship, press two. If it's both, press three. Each one right gets you $300, but each one wrong totally screws up your back. You've got 30 seconds. All right, let's get started. Flying jib. Maybe you should try doing this with only one eye patch on. And of course, the easiest exercise for a pirate to do is the amputated leg lift. That's all we got for round one. Let's hope you do a hell of a lot better the rest of the way. Keep in mind, in round two, everything is worth twice as much. And lest you forget, keep an eye out for the wrong answer of the game. It's still out there. All right, you ready? Too bad. Here we have I Can't Quit You movie franchise. Suppose they make a sequel to Brokeback Mountain set on the second tallest mountain in the world. What might it be called? Brokeback K2? Brokeback Mountain 2 Matterhorn E? Brokeback 2 Never Rest on Everest? Or Broke Black Mountain? If you didn't want to play, why the hell did we even get started? How about this for a right answer? The mountain known as K2 on the border of Pakistan and China is the second tallest mountain in the world after Mount Everest. Personally, I prefer Brokeback Mountain, the remount. Question seven. Take a good look at my accountant's a real joker. Why might an accountant use a Heath Ledger to keep track of his nerves, to keep track of his livestock, to keep track of his fireplace, or to keep track of his shrubbery? Hey, it's your game. You want to watch it slip away? Fine by me. While you're waiting. Accountants use ledgers to keep track of things, like Heath, a kind of shrubbery. And after a full day of shrubbery accounting, I'm sure he's pretty bushed. Blocking chickens picking out a mate. Guess I'll marry eight. Coming up next, American literature is garbage. Okay, somebody sent in somebody's trash. Look at the Alright, 
Mmm, this steaming pile of trash smells literary. Let's see what we can find. There's an ambulance driver's license from World War One, some Cuban cigar butts, and an empty bottle of foot cream specifically designed for six-toed cats. What famous author does this trash belong to? Mark Twain, John Steinbeck, Ernest Hemingway, or Toni Morrison? This is pathetic. Do I need to start answering the questions too? Ernest Hemingway was a volunteer ambulance driver in World War I, spent 20 years living in Cuba, and owned a collection of six-toed cats known as Hemingway cats. Let's see what else Hemingway threw out. Huh, what's this? A farewell to arms too. Armless and loving it. Jeez, I'll just put that back in the garbage. Strolling through the park with the sarsaparilla. And now, I'd like to make a reservation for 6.3 people, please. Based on the average household size in the United States, what might you expect to hear at one of these restaurants? Table for 2.6 at the Cheesecake Factory, table for 2.9 at Red Robin, table for 3.2 at Denny's, or table for 3.5 at Cracker Barrel. If you didn't want to play, why the hell did we even get started? How about this for a right answer? The average American household is made up of 2.6 people, give or take an arm or a torso. Though if you base it on weight, that number increases significantly after eating a Cheesecake Factory. Hold me, never let me go. Bucker up for fries or tater tots? Hey, did you know King Tut was just nine years old when he became pharaoh of Egypt? Probably still read the Egyptian funny papers every day. Considering which animal the Egyptians worshipped, which ancient comic strip character would King Tut have enjoyed the most? Garfield Hotep, Marmaduke Memnon, Dilbertiti, or Opus Iris? Hey, it's your game. You want to watch it slip away? Fine by me. While you're waiting. The ancient Egyptians were known to revere and worship cats, like Garfield and Garfield Hotep. <sighs> and they hated Mondays. <laughs> Step right up to the jack attack. When you see two clues that match, Press the number one. 4,000 big ones if you're right, but say goodbye to 4,000 if you're wrong. But keep this in mind. Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. A banana by any other name would smell as banana eat. Perhaps you know these foods by their aliases. Good luck.
There you have it! So you played by your little lonesome and ended up with exactly zero dollars. This, my friend, is the definition of pointless. You realize you could have spent this time doing something much more useful, right? You could have been volunteering at a shelter or tutoring a young child, making phone calls on behalf of some human rights organization, or, uh, geez, you could have spent this time learning a second language or how to play an instrument. Not to bring you down or anything, but... You don't know! Nice work, folks. Donnie, what's going on? So, are you thinking you'd like to enrage in more Tom Flummery? So, uh, thanks again for having me over, Scott. Oh, you're welcome, Marjorie. <laughs> um, so... Is your date night conversation a bore? Yes, yes it is. Please help. We have nothing to talk about. Then try Nigel the Chimney Sweep. He's a real adorable British street urchin who makes an excellent conversation piece. Oh, well, isn't he fabulous? All ragged and covered in soot. Oh, please, miss, help me. I have a family. They don't know where I am. Please help. <laughs> oh, I haven't the slightest what he's saying, but look at that adorable hat. And you, Scott. Well, you seem so... so nurturing. Thanks, Marjorie. Please, please, I miss me mum. Why am I dressed like this? Get your very own Nigel the Chimney Sweep today so he can start sweeping your loved ones into your heart. Help me! Or hearth. Help me! And now a message from the law offices of Edgar J. Penrod. I'm attorney Edgar J. Penrod. Have you recently been in an auto accident? Have you suffered major injuries? If you answered yes to both of these questions, then chances are you're the person I hit with my car last week. So call the law offices of Edgar J. Penrod today. Because hey, nobody wants to go to court, right? The Law Offices of Edgar J. Penrod. Sorry, our bad. Hey everybody, this is Mike Builder, General Manager of Jellyvision Games, the makers of You Don't Know Jack. We're hard at work here on the floor of the Jellyvision Game Design Workshop, coming up with great games that you'll be playing in the years to come. So keep your eyes peeled for some of our upcoming products, like Angry Yoga, Vampires vs. Show Dogs, Wacky Oki, What's That Smell, Newscaster, Tax Preparation 3D, Space Farts, Enough About You, and Tween Fighter. We're also working on lots of casual games that are fun for the whole family. Puppy Bucket, Everybody Help Grandma, Jarts, Awkward Confessions, and so much more. So if you love fun and fart noises, clear some room on your game shelf for the Jellyvision games of the future. You dress yourself to the nines every day. Why shouldn't you do the same for your friend with nine lives? At Meow Inappropriate Cat Accessories, we stock hundreds of unnecessary adornments to shamelessly decorate any cat. We've got cat saddles, kitty swim trunks, feline infrared goggles, and introducing the electronic cat translator. Feed me. Leave me alone. Go f*** yourself. So if it's cute, if it's teeny, and if it probably shouldn't go on a cat, then you'll find it at Meow Inappropriate Cat Accessories, located between the Bicycles for Dogs Warehouse and the Lizard Mittens Emporium. Janice, how do you keep your skin looking so youthful? Well, I'll let you in on my secret if you promise to keep it under your hat! This is not my real face! It's a mask! Forever Young Baby Disguise is perfect for those who long for those wrinkle-free days of youth. And it's so simple. Just a color photo of a baby's face blown up and printed on 100% recycled cardboard. Simply apply the mask with tape and voila! You have a baby face. <laughs> and here I thought you were just naturally youthful. No! And it's so much cheaper than Sandry! Here, try one! Wow! I can already tell that people are looking at me differently. Thanks to Forever Young Baby Disguise, I can hold my head up high. In 2002, a film came out that changed the genre of fantasy suspense forever. Mine the sunlight as it dies. A weary sight for weary eyes. No, witch. You will not weaken me. Salazar, throw me the pendant. <laughs> That film was Witch's Wheel 2. You probably don't remember the original Witch's Wheel. It was kind of a mess. But the sequel has left audiences wondering what happens next for nearly 10 years. This summer, the wait is over. Chauncey Zeigman presents Witch's Wheel 2. <laughs> 2. The silence of these woods is suspicious. <laughs> Salazar! Three elves! Quickly, Warlock! An incantation! Arriba. This July, prepare yourselves for... Witch's Wheel 2. 2. The sequel. 
waiting for. Uh -huh.